What is spiritual sovereignty? So sovereignty is kind of a buzzword in the spiritual community. I've heard it a lot in the last years, especially with all of the things that have been happening in the world and the necessity at this time to step into spiritual sovereignty or just sovereignty in general. So I'm just going to deconstruct and go into what that means to me and what I've learned about this. Um, because I have in the last two years healed so much around this and um, I have been given by my guides in my meditations um, again and again a crown to put on my head. And um, it was only later that I realized what this actually means and it means that I was stepping into my sovereignty. I was just stepping out of it again and again so that I had, they had to give me back my crown again and again because apparently I was still taking it off. So um, yeah, at some point they stopped giving me the crown. So yeah, that means that I am not giving it up anymore. So that's good. Um, so I have just made some notes on the um, uh, sort of my definition on sovereignty and spiritual sovereignty. So. It means that you're not dependent anymore on something outside of you for energy, love or guidance. And it means that your crown chakra is open and restored to source. So you have a source connection there. And you're also leading what your energy like royalty does, like a queen or a king does. Um, you're determining the energy in the room or with people rather than controlling it or being influenced by it which are both states of powerlessness. If you want to control something, it means that you feel powerless to it and that you are starting to fight with something else instead of just being yourself as a sovereign king or queen and just radiating your energy and living from that and taking action from that space. And that's really what sovereignty is. Um, we are just in our own frequency and instead of being influenced by the outside world and reactive against it, we are just living from our own core, our own source connection, our own soul, however you want to call that. And we are putting out our energy. So it is undeniable. People can't get around it anymore. We're strongly rooted in ourselves and who we are, and we have stepped into our power. And then we have that crown in our crown chakra. And this was also really the lesson behind Corona, because that means crown. So um, the things that um, like it introduced, the like substances that are being put in our bodies, if you chose to do so, um, they are known to um, really compromise or even cut off the connection that is right here between your crown chakra and source and um, that's really the the area in the energy system that it targets to to cut that off so um, there's an agenda that inhibits us to step into our spiritual sovereignty because what would that mean that would mean that you have self-governing people that are not willing to be governed anymore by something external that are not able to be controlled anymore by something external. And we are living still in a codependent society. So that means that instead of everybody having that horizontal plug into source for their own energy, for their own source of love and approval and validation, for their own guidance on what to do and what is happening and how to do everything, um, People are dependent on that flow of energy, of love and of guidance from the outside. So what happens is you have a lot of codependent relationships in this society between people that are dependent on one another for certain things. And there are systems that we are being programmed and conditioned to be, de to be dependent on, um, like the medical system, instead of being um, autonomous and self-governed in our health and taking it into our own hands by um, choosing to live a certain lifestyle, for example, or eat certain foods or um, do our own self-healing on an energetic level, metaphysical level. Um, so these are all ways that we are giving our power away, we're giving our crown away 
to external things that then govern us. So um, that's really what's happening here. And that's also what we're healing collectively. And um, codependency, what does that mean? It means that you're um, dependent on one another um, for that energy. So it can also look like narcissism, for example, or any other personality like disorder or anything like that is a pattern in psychology um, that is an adaptation because of trauma. So um, it all comes down to the same thing. And in the earliest part of our childhood, there wasn't a healthy attachment being formed to our caregivers. And this attachment, when it is healthy, when it is secure, um, is really key to our survival and then to our thriving as human beings in order to, to unfold uh, in an autonomous way. So this is really a necessity for uh, that process um, unfolding unobstructed. And if it is compromised, which happens a lot um, in this society, because parents usually have their own trauma patterns and they don't know any better, um, you get a lot of people that have insecure attachment. So they are connected to themselves and the world. Um, later on, this is a reflection of the earliest attachment they had with their parents. They're, they're attached uh, and attaching to it in an insecure way, in a codependent way. So they're making themselves dependent on people, for example, that are not healthy for them or systems that are mistreating them and abusing them um, in some kind of way. And underneath this pattern is a lot of trauma, is a lot of fear to be um, independent or uh, autonomous and sovereign. I'm just using those words like in, in interchangeably, even though they're like different meanings a little bit. Um, but when we start to heal our trauma, and this, but with this I mean also our earliest attachment trauma, which is the layer that at some point we will reach in our healing journey. We will go to, to our deepest traumas um, and really um, sort of reassemble ourselves at the core of us and um, develop secure attachment within ourselves. Um, so this happens on a psychological level, on a mental level and on an emotional level, but it also, if we're on the spiritual path, happens on the spiritual level. And that's what spiritual sovereignty is. It's a result of our healing journey. It's a result of our healing work. So the more that we heal our traumas, the more um, or the less dependent we are on coping mechanisms to get energy or love or approval or guidance or permission in a way from people outside of us because now we're giving those things to ourselves. And from that state of wholeness, we can still need um, love, approval, energy, guidance, anything basically that is a, a need that we can have, but it's no longer from a space of lack. So what then happens is that those um, things that then come from the outside are actually adding to us and they're fulfilling us rather than it just, um, it's, it's something that we're dependent upon. And then um, when we're dependent upon something, we're, uh, we're getting the love maybe from people around us, but we're so afraid that we will lose it, that we're not even taking it in fully. We're not even allowing ourselves to uh, be nurtured by it um, because we are just clinging to it. We're attaching to it with, uh, from these traumas of desperation, for example. Um, Whereas if we completely fill ourselves up with our own energy source and our own love and we meet ourselves where we are in every moment and we look at what we need in every moment and we take care of that and we take action steps and we follow our internal guidance compass, that's sovereignty. Then you're like a queen or a king that's just living from the inside out. They're putting out, you're putting out your own, like you're leading yourself through life. And you can also lead others. I mean, you can, if that's your path, um, if you want, but you're leading yourself. And then everything from the outside will just thoroughly nurture you because you're no longer, no longer clinging to it. Um, and it can actually 
uh, pass through you and nourish you. So, um, yeah, this, this really starts with um, meeting ourselves in every moment as we are and loving ourselves, catching ourselves. If we want to develop spiritual sovereignty, um, we need to basically start to heal ourselves. And this starts with just meeting ourselves where we are in every present moment. Um, and this is such an um, overlooked thing. It's such a simple essence of uh, the spiritual path to be present, to be in the moment and to um, yeah, really meet ourselves in that, to feel what we're feeling on an emotional level um, or a physical level, even in our bodies uh, with the sensations that we feel. Um, to become aware and present to and witness of our thoughts, which is what meditation is about. Um, and this is really the fundamental basic principle of spiritual development. This is how we start to develop our sovereignty. Um, because this is also what will restore on an energetic level um, our crown chakra. So when we become present, um, especially in our thoughts, but we need to do it on the, the, the three levels that I mentioned, the physical, mental and emotional. Um, if we can become present to our thoughts, that's, that's this area of the chakra system. Um, it's, it's the third eye and the crown chakra. It basically opens up to witness consciousness. So witness consciousness is just mindfulness. It's just awareness. Um, and that's basically source energy, it's source, it's our soul witnessing what our human self is going through. Um, and that's how you, how you restore your connection there. Um, and that's also how you undo conditionings of and programmings of the matrix, for example. Um, when you become present, when you become aware, when you uh, raise your awareness and raise your consciousness, you're, you're um, basically... Um, allowing in the light of source in your crown chakra and this will alchemize and transmute anything that is lower in frequency and this is really why uh, in the spiritual world there's like a lot of talk about raising awareness or um, like the starseed mission in general is about raising awareness raising the consciousness uh, awakening it's all about consciousness because when we bring the light of our consciousness to something, we become sovereign. We become spiritually sovereign. Our crown chakra reopens. We get restored back to the connection to our soul, the connection to source, the connection to our sovereign source of energy and love and guidance. So we can finally, um, yeah, really unfold in the way that our soul wants instead of from a space of aversion to something or attachment to something. We're not running away from something anymore. We're not running towards something anymore and away from something, which is like, it's the same, like the same thing, just different poles from it. If we attach to something, we're afraid of the opposite. And if we uh, are afraid of something, we're attaching to the opposite. Um, and really, spiritual sovereignty is living in a space of non-attachment. You're not attaching anymore to, you're not dependent anymore to something outside of you. This is often what's being taught um, in the, like the sort of the basic of spirituality, non-attachment, disidentification, mindfulness, uh, meditation. It's really at the basic of it. And, it's, and it, um, it will work to some point. And... Um, at some point, we have um, let in the light enough in our system that it now starts to trigger and let come up our deepest traumas, our attachment traumas that I mentioned before. This is really the most challenging phase of spiritual development. It's the shadow work phase. It's like you're, work you're walking through the underworld, you're passing through all of your deepest, darkest fears, your traumas. Um, you're going through the dark night of the soul. Um, we ha you have already awakened to the spiritual realms. You've already let in some of the light. But now you're just going through 
um, an even deeper initiation. So it could very well be that this is the second night of your second night of your soul, the second dark night of your soul, but the first one was before your spiritual awakening, but now you're going into another one that is even more deep and you don't even know how to deal with this because the the usual things that you did before, which is like just meditation or affirmations or um, I don't know, doing yoga, uh, just infusing yourself with that light of awareness, it's no longer cutting it. Because what's happening now is that your ego is starting to um, really bring up all of these different things that are not aligned in your system. And your higher self is trying to align your ego to it so that it can uh, become the observer to the observer almost. And it's like um, this beautiful marriage of, of the human ego, which is just here as an analyzer along the ride. Uh, our mind is just meant for that, to just analyze and be able to discern and determine what um, is a match to us so that we can move forward in that. That's really what a healthy ego is about, which is something that we all need here. Um, yeah, and when that, uh, when that happens, it basically our ego needs to come into alignment and our ego is um, comprised out of all of our different egos. We basically have so much different egos in our system, so much different parts to us that um, are all coming from a source of trauma. They have split off the, out of our wholeness because of the shock of a trauma and they just um, fragmented. We fragment uh, when we go through a trauma that, um, that is just something that uh, threatens our survival and well-being that we can't cope with on that, in that very moment. Um, so it is stored away for later. And now that we have let in more light in our spiritual awakening, it starts to come up. And we don't know how to deal with this because we don't have the infrastructure internally in order to deal with it. So um, yeah, this is really a challenging phase. And I'm also planning to, I think, do another video on the dark night of the soul um, because it came up with a client that, um, that I worked with. And it is such a challenging phase also because if you're already spiritual and psychic, you probably also get a whole um, uh, extra dimension added to it, which is the lower astral dimension. Um, if you're on the spiritual path, you will start to see the monsters and the darkness everywhere. And this is really challenging. Um, uh, yeah, so how to navigate that? Um, I'm planning to do uh, another video on that as well. So if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button or comment. Or um, yeah, if you want to know more, uh, subscribe to my channel. I highly appreciate everybody that uh, sticks around and keeps watching and comments on my video. Sending so much love to you and appreciation and thank you for that. And if you want to go deeper um, with me in these kinds of conversations, you're very welcome on my Patreon, which is a monthly membership platform where you can ask questions to me in a monthly Q&A. Um, I write articles, I do channelings, and uh, I did wonderful channelings by uh, Isis, uh, the Pleiadians, um, Mary Magdalene, Jesus. And it's such a fun space um, to deepen and explore your intuitive development and your healing path. And everything you run into on the spiritual path, this spiritual journey of um, basically stepping into our sovereignty. So check that out. The link is below if that resonates. Um, and thank you so very much for watching.